Guys, guess what? You are now watching episode one of Suit Up with Stephen Atkins. I'm so excited to be here today. Like this is something that I've wanted to do for quite some time. And you know, you get to that place where how do I get started? Where do I even begin? And here we are. This is uh, this is something I'm really, really excited about. Um, even even the name Suit Up, right? Oh yeah. That's that's something that to me a you know just is the epitome of everything that I'm about. I want to suit up in my personal life. I want to suit up in my fashion, uh, in my health, in my wellness, in just every area of my life. I look at it that uh, I want to elevate my game. So coming up with the name Suit Up was just perfect. Uh, and in fact, I can thank my wife for that, my lovely wife, Miss Lisa Atkins. She's the one who came up with the name, and uh, it's, it's going to be a good time, be a good time. So really for the podcast, we're going to do a lot of different things. We're going to talk about a wide variety of subjects and, and uh, we're going to let it happen kind of organically. I'm really not in any one particular direction, um, but we're going to have a good time. And uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit. You'll learn a lot more about me personally, um, where I come from, uh, my background, some of the things that uh, I'm involved with and the things that I love. And uh, also, I'm interested to interact with my audience as well. I'm, I'm interested to see what are some things that you guys would like to know about or hear about or uh, learn more about, because we really want to be um, a resource as well as uh, have a good time, right? So I'm excited to uh, be here today, and we're, we're going to get started. Uh, got my boy Tim with me. Hey, yo. What's up, brother? What's going on, man? man? I'm doing good, my man. Doing good, doing good. What do you think, man? Good. Episode one. We're, we're in it. We're, we're all in it. Yeah, deep in, baby. <laughs> deep in. Deep in. I love it. I love it. Oh, yeah. Nothing like trial by fire, right? That's right. That's it. Got to start it. somewhere. Start I'd somewhere. say you're starting at a pretty good spot. There you go. Yeah, I appreciate that. A little <laughs> bit of a leg up, right? Absolutely. A little bit of a leg up. Yep. So, you know, I got started um, about, about five years ago. Uh, believe it or not, I started by just growing my beard out. And uh, a buddy of mine was like, man, you know, the, the coloring in your beard is like really, really cool. You should, you should do something with that. And before I even thought about doing anything uh, modeling wise, you know, I got involved in uh, voiceover work. Um, I called into a local radio station one time and, and uh, was just, I think, answering a question about a, um, um, I think it was some kind of survey or, or whatever. I can't even necessarily remember exactly. And the DJ uh, was like, you know, does anybody ever tell you you have a great radio voice? And I was like, really? And uh, he was like, man, you should do something with that. And I was like, well, okay. So I started looking into to voiceover work and got training and, and was doing a little bit of commercials. And then my, uh, my coach at the time was, was saying, you know, you ought to do some, some headshots, like just some promo headshots. And because uh, I think not only could you do voice acting, but you might could do a little bit of act work or, you know, whatever. And I was like, OK, we'll, we'll give it a shot. Took a couple of headshots. And, and at that time, I really even think I was really on social media. So I decided to create a social media page and put a few photos out. And lo and behold, man, it took off like wildfire. Um, all of a sudden, I'm getting calls and, and people are asking me like, hey, can you uh, can you come and sponsor, you know, be an ambassador for this, or can you come and do some promotional shots for us? And was reached out by a, uh, national, uh, beard grooming products company, um, that they were looking for an up and coming, you know, new model to kind of advertise their, their products. And, uh, so I flew down to Austin, Texas and did the promo shots. And then those got onto social media and, it just organically things just started to pick up. I picked up a bunch of followers and, and people started sending me more messages. And then all of a sudden, you know, I get another uh, message of, Hey, we'd love for you to be a runway model, I'm like a runway model. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I get on the runway. I'm like, okay, let's do this. Let's do this. So I, I first experience on the runway and then this is not for everybody but my first experience on the runway was New York Fashion Week so I fly up to New York and I meet this wonderful designer and he's got uh, uh, a great look just specifically for me hit the runway absolutely crushed it 
And then, then it just, the bottom fell out. Everything just started coming in. People were, you know, I got involved with uh, Richmond Fashion Week. I was one of their runway models for a long time and then did DC Fashion Week and then, you know, up and down the East Coast here. And wow, what, what an experience. So then as the social media starts to pick up steam and I'm starting to become a runway model and, and publications are reaching out to me saying, we'd love for you to be on the cover. And, uh, you know, I'm like, wow, this is amazing. I never would have thought I'd be where I am today and doing the things that I'm doing. But I will say that the more I did it, the more determined I was to stay consistent with it. And I wanted to uh, see where this could go. Now, a lot of times, let me tell you what, I wasn't getting paid to do it. This was a lot of an investment of my own, a lot of time, a lot of travel, out of pocket expense. But at the time, I felt like I was investing in myself. Um, and it was worth it. Because I knew that if I kept going and I kept going and I didn't give up, that I just I knew that there was light at the end of the tunnel. Something was going to break loose, you know, a little bit bigger. Uh, picked up a couple little acting gigs, did some commercials here, you know, locally in Richmond, Virginia, and uh, some nationally. And I was, you know, starting to get a little bit more momentum. And uh, we'll fast forward a little bit, you know, because just going through my career of doing the basics and staying consistent, posting on Instagram. You know, I, I saw a group of guys that were really, really uh, stylish and just crushing it in what they were doing. And uh, one of them was, you know, Irvin Randall. And Irvin Randall got his start way back from uh, uh, Mr. Steal Your Grandma. He was this internet sensation where he was posting some fly, you know, outfits. And, and I think it was his daughter or granddaughter that, that took pictures of him and started trending really well on, on social media. And uh, I was just inspired. You know, I was inspired by what they were doing. So I just sent him a message. I was like, man, I love what you guys are doing. You guys are crushing it, you know, representing those of us that are, you know, a little bit older and, and silver and gray. And uh, we just communicated for a little while. And he came back to me and he says, man, let me tell you something. I said, we, we've been known as a, as a um, African-American group, but I, I'm looking to diversify. And he's like, man, I would like for you to, to be a member of this group. I was like, wow, are you kidding me? Uh, I, I was kind of taken back, but I was excited at the same time. I felt honored. I felt, um, you know, here's this guy that from, a, from afar, I was a big fan of. This is somebody that I followed, took inspiration from. And uh, all of a sudden, this guy's asking me to become a part of their group. I said, of course. So I flew down to Houston. There was an event that they were having. Uh, met the guys. I mean, we instantly gelled and, you know, it is, it's been a little over, I guess a year and a half that I've been a member of the Silver Fox squad. Um, and we have, it's, it's just been a rocket ship of being a member of that group, the things that we've been able to do and accomplish. Um, and I'm loving every minute of it. So it's, it's interesting how I look at the transition from starting in one lane and thinking that might be the thing, and then how it just naturally graduates to different uh, opportunities. And I, I think that's uh, you know a word of advice that you may start somewhere, but that not might not be where you end up. But it definitely for me staying consistent, building relationships, um, investing in myself, and putting in the work. Um, and we're still putting in major major amount of work right now, trying to get things done. Um, traveling, touring. Um, yeah, it, it's been a lot, a lot of fun. A lot, a lot of fun. Tim, you know who the Silver Fox Squad is? Yeah, I do now. You do now? Yeah, that's right, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool group of guys. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, 11, it's 11 of us. Yeah. I always say it's like the starting offensive line of a football team, yeah. you know, so... <laughs> Yeah, we have a good time. We have a good time, man. Yeah, I'm excited to meet them all, man. You got to get them in here and get to, you know, show, show them off to your audience. For sure, yeah. And the great thing is, you know, each of us are uh, from different backgrounds. You know, some of us come from fashion, health, uh, professor at a university, uh, in the automotive industry, um, yeah, um, modeling, uh, just trying to think some of the ones that uh, 
Yeah, it's it's really cool because we're all from different backgrounds. Um, our ages range. You know, our youngest is forty three, all the way up to sixty. Um, all of us have you know our gray and silver. We embrace it, and we inspire one another, which I really enjoy doing. It's a it's a healthy competition with one another, especially when we're out and about. Um, but it, but we're all very humble and grateful for you know where we're at and and the fame that's coming with it for sure. Um, we have uh, uh, a lot of fan base and we're growing quickly and it's a little surreal at times because you know you're not used to it in in a, in a big environment like that and then when you're all together and people are mobbing you and wanting photos what's cool like the modern autograph is the selfie right oh yeah it's really cool how everybody wants to get a picture nowadays and you know we appreciate it i mean we love it i love it i'll just be honest i love it <laughs> yeah, that's cool man what, what's uh where's the craziest fans at that you've encountered miami Miami. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were, uh, we were down in Miami for, um, just some promo shots and we were on a yacht and, you know, did a little video just to kind of show a little bit more about us. And, um, we were down on uh, Miami beach and we were just walking together and all of a sudden the crowds just started coming and the more and more and more to the point where we just had to kind of duck into an ice cream shop just for a few minutes, just to get away uh, cause people were, you know, it was getting out of hand pretty quick. Oh yeah. But, uh, no, nothing but love, nothing but love. But we, uh, yeah, we're getting used to that of when it's time to go somewhere, we're going from point A to point B. Sometimes we just got to have head down and it's like, guys are like, when it's time to move, we got to move. Like you can't lollygag. It's time to go. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, yeah. Miami was, Miami was pretty cool. Um, I mean, we just got back from, um, the essence festival which that was an amazing experience uh definitely had us on stage and able to talk a little bit more about us as a group and you know just a meet and greet and and get to know you know our fan base and uh but yeah it's it's a it's a surreal experience but at the same time i enjoy you know getting to know people and hearing from them how we're inspiring them um and that's really what the main mission is of the group is that we're looking to inspire all walks of life, you know, young and old. So, but yeah, man. Yeah, definitely. When, when, when these people approach you, mm -hmm. cause I, I would imagine, you know, 11 guys dressed to the nines walking down the street in Miami or wherever <laughs> right. it's at. Right, right, right. Like something's going on. So, yeah. so do these people run up and they're just like, Oh my God, it's a silver Fox squad. Or are they yeah. like, what, what do y'all do? Like y'all are famous. We want to know what you do. Both. Okay. Yeah. A lot of times we'll see that, uh, um, I'll tell you a funny story. So we always we always joke that there's either two things that happen. First of all, when someone comes up for a picture, they always say it's my birthday. So the running joke is everywhere we go, it's my birthday. Can I get a photo? <laughs> and we all kind of laugh because they're like, watch, this could be it's my birthday. We we'll say it amongst ourselves. And then sure enough, it's my birthday. And we'll start laughing a little bit. So it's, it's almost like a pre-qualification that it has to be your birthday to get the photo. Uh, the second thing is we laugh because so many people – uh, in the past have struggled to get the name right. Mm. It's the it's the Silver Beards or it's the Silver Fox Crew or it's the club or it's the Beard Gang and all this oh. kind of stuff. <laughs> and we laugh and we're like, yeah, it's the Silver Fox Squad. Um, we did notice a change this past weekend, though. I will admit uh, that, that more people are, are getting the name right. You know, yeah. oh, it's the Silver Fox Squad. Um, and they'll ask us straight up, like, what do you guys do? And uh, we're like, you know, hey, so in essence, the what we do is that we want to be, first of all, an inspiration and kind of show um, how you can dress well, how you can treat a woman, how chivalry's not dead, how you can uh, elevate your health. Because uh, as we get older, um, a lot of times it's looked at, you just kind of, you know, things change. You just let yourself kind of go a little bit. You get a little more relaxed. Uh, so we, we, we want to kind of be like, hey, let's let's think about a different way. Let's let's elevate our game. Uh, and one of the things that we're really focusing on is our charitable work. So uh, unfortunately, you know, due to the pandemic that we had for a while, a lot of our plans changed and we weren't able to do. And we're trying to get to that place now. We're recycling back where when we travel to locations or we go do events 
that we do want to give back to the community. Oh, yeah. Uh, either through like a symposium per se, or you know, a meet and greet, or um, you know, at a local food bank. I'm just giving you know ideas and things. Little boys and girls clubs where we can go and do a little mentoring. You know, so we're finally at a place where we're going to be able to get back to doing that. And a lot of us individually, you know, do community outreach within our own communities. Um, but we're excited to be able to do it, you know, as a whole. Um, and, and a lot of times we have the, the meet and greets where we'll allow the audience to just ask us questions based on, you know, curiosity. What, what, a little more about you. Where do you come from? Where do you do uh, outside of the squad? Um, and it goes to show, too, like just ordinary gentlemen that, that can do extraordinary things uh, uh, through, you know, our wonderful social media platforms that we have nowadays or just uh, inspiration through dress or style or fashion. So we do get a lot of people that ask us, you know, like even on our social media now, like, well, what do they do? They look good, but what do they do? Yeah. Well, I just asked you that today. Yeah. <laughs> you know, exactly. Exactly. Valid question. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're, you're inspiring people. You know, I think that's. I, I think a lot of people don't look at that as like a job that should be like paid for, but I mean, it is like, like yeah. you're out here on a mission to help Absolutely. guys, you know, understand what it means to, to be a man and, and own how that. can I be a better man? I'd be a better man. Yeah, right. exactly. It, that's that. How can I be a better man? Um, and in this day and age, we need that. Yep. We need that. We need guys to, to, to step it up. Um, I think personally, um, that's been forgotten a little bit. Yep. And that that's one of the missions when I saw I'm like, yeah, I definitely want to be an inspiration, not only with the group, but myself personally. I want to carry that with me because I'm representing myself. I'm representing my family. I'm representing the squad, you know, all of that. Um, so, yeah. And, and then giving back to the works. I, I know that we're, we're growing and we're going to be on, you know, a much larger platform in front of a lot more people. And, uh, the more fame that comes with that, the more eyeballs that are going to be on us. And we've got our haters too. And I understand that I have sympathy for them. Yep. You know, I have sympathy for our haters. Um, but what can we do with that platform? And I was like, let's do some good with that platform. Let's, let's, you know, come up with new ideas of things that we can do to either give back, uh, or be even more of an inspiration. So yeah, it's, it's definitely coming in strong. And we're enjoying it. We're enjoying the the notoriety and the fame that's coming with it and the recognition. But at the same time, you know, we're extremely humble and grateful for it as well. I mean, we know, we know in this day and age that not everybody gets these opportunities. So we're definitely taking advantage of it and, and we want to, you know, do the best that we can with it. So, um, and I feel like we're just getting started too. We are so oh, just yeah. getting started. Yeah, I'm excited to see where it goes, man. I, I wanted to ask you this, and we, we can cut it if it's too deep for, for episode number one. <laughs> hey. I'm just curious. You might get this question yeah. uh, a bit. So for the people that love to talk about like toxic max masculinity, right? Sure. Do those questions come up? Because we are celebrating men here yes. uh, and what it means to be Correct. the right kind of man, right? Yeah. It's bold yeah. statements to make in 2022. So. Yeah, of course, of course. Um it hasn't really hit us uh, too much yet um, with that, the, the toxicity of, mm -hmm. you know, masculinity. Yep. Um, I think at times, you know, there's, there's a good balance. Um, you know, the questions asked, like, what does it mean to be a man? Like, what, what are uh, some of the, the, I don't know, the way I'm looking at it is... Uh, what are some of the standard things that's looked at as being a man, you know, in this day and age as a family man? So I'm a family man. I've, I've been married uh, almost 21 years and I have, you know, two uh, high school student uh, daughters. And, you know, I look at it as, you know, we think a lot about our, our upbringings. Um, I come from a middle class family. Uh, my, my mother and father were married for 50 years. Um, I've, my father passed away a few years ago, but you know, they were, I got to see the, the trials and the tests and, but you know, when you're fit together 50 years, there's a lot of ups and downs, but you oh, yeah. kind of, you know, when you find yourself sometimes taking on some of the habits of things of what your parents did and you try to take the best of what you saw and, and apply it today. Yep. Um, you know, my mom was a stay at home mom while uh, myself and my sister were growing up and then she 
my dad was a sole proprietor, so he owned his own business. And so she went and kind of helped working, you know, in the business as well. So I saw all of that. I saw the, the sole proprietor, entrepreneur type, um, and how the family was involved with that as well. So I think a lot of times we take, what does it mean to be a man? And we'll take it from, you know, our home life. Okay. And I also understand that not everybody has that. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean that we can't, you know, that we can't learn or be willing to, you know, um, step outside of what we thought we knew and, and, and add a little extra to it. Like, uh, you know, I see this guy over here and, you know, I didn't grow up with a dad or saying I didn't grow up with a dad or I didn't have that lifestyle, but you did. And, you know, I want to raise a family or I want to get married. And, you know, uh, I, I think I, I'll put it like this. It's really good to get that coaching or yeah. that mentorship. Um, even as a, a man where I am, I still have mentors and coaching and sure. go through all of that uh, just because I want to be better. And, and we've had to grow a lot even in our marriage, yeah. um, for sure. Um, my dad worked a lot because mm -hmm. he, was, he was a business owner. But that doesn't, didn't mean he was there all the time because he was providing for the family. Yep. You know, and then you make some of the decisions for yourself. Like I'm a business owner and I have multiple things that I'm doing. But uh, I, I wanted to make that little adjustment for myself that I didn't want to work all the time. I wanted to be home on the weekends. I wanted to mm -hmm. be, you know, a little bit more involved with my family. So it's, it's different for everybody. But, yeah, there's kind of some certain, I would say, you know, standards of I still feel like chivalry's not dead. Yeah. Um, but that's what you said that, that got me thinking about that question. Is yeah. The chivalry piece? Because yeah. that's a big topic. You know? Yeah. It's like, it's, yeah. It is what it is. I mean, it's it is 2022. What, you know? Right. But, but I and, think and, what you said about the, the coaching and the mentoring mm -hmm. of these guys that maybe grew up, because I, I grew up same way as you, middle class, you know, uh, two-parent household, yeah. everything normal, right? And, uh, but yeah, I can totally see from that perspective, somebody that didn't have that, where, where y'all's group and, and just y'all individually even yeah. can, can kind of be that outlet for these guys to and understand what it really means. That's a great point. Yeah. And using the platform to do that. Yeah. Right. And, and we want to be a resource for that. There's nothing wrong with, you know, asking. Um, and I know, you know, for me personally, I've had several people ask me, you know, because you've been married so long or because you have two daughters and, you know, all those types of things. And there's people that have gone before me where their kids are a little bit older. We got a couple of guys in the squad where they've been married longer and they have older kids. And I'm like, hey, man, you know, like I'm going through this season of life. Yeah. And they're like, oh, man, <laughs> been there, done that, right? I totally get it. I totally get it. He's like, you know, or, or they're acting a certain way, they're doing certain things. And everybody's like, oh, it's totally normal. It's totally normal. It's just a rite of passage. These are things you have to go through. So, yeah, it's a great resource to be able to have mentors or those of us that are, you know, in this day and age that we can look to one another, you know, yep. for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent, man. Yeah, man. So we have uh, a couple of ideas, you know, for future podcasts, which I'm excited about as well that, you know, I, I know for, for me, I love fashion. It's just one of my things. I, I absolutely love fashion and being involved with Richmond fashion week. Um, one of my true passions here locally, we do, um, two shows a year spring and fall. And I uh, started off as a model and did that for many years and then was asked, approached by the executive producer. And he was like, Hey, I'd love for you to, you know, come on this side now and be our model coordinator. So I was like, wow, that'd be great. I'd love to do that. Uh, walk the runway approximately around 30 times up and down, like I said, up and down the East coast and felt like I had good enough experience to be able to do that. So I took on the position and the role as a model coordinator with Richmond fashion week. And so my job was to, you know, audition all the models. They, they, they're walking for me and I'm kind of tweaking and auditioning and trying to select, you know, the best of the best that, that we have here, uh, for our shows. And, and I absolutely love doing it. And you get, get to that point where, you know, sometimes you do something and then when you start to teach it, you get better at it even more so because you're on the other side. And uh, so I ran that for a couple of years and then my position changed because they felt like that as some of the things that I'm doing now, I'm being more into the public eye. They, they were said, well, you know, we'd love for you to be the spokesman for Fashion Week, kind of, you know, as host or face of the franchise, some of those types of things. 
And I was like, I'd love to do it. Love to take the, take on that role. Uh, but they were like, but we still want you to serve on the model board and kind of help us, you know, within that realm. And, and I was appreciative of that. Cause you know, you get, you get involved with it. You get to develop the relationships with a lot of the models and they, you know, they look up to you for advice and they just enjoy you being so much a part of it. And I didn't want to lose that, that separation aspect of it. But, uh, you know, we've got designer calls and model calls coming up and we're, you know, not too far away from our, uh, fall fashion week. So I'm really, really excited about that. I even think we might even do a podcast, you know, during fashion week. Uh, we've got a lot of things within that realm between local talent and designers and models and producers and photographers and videographers. There's so much of an awesome network, uh, that's involved with that, that you develop relationships with these people. And it's a great experience. And I'm really, really excited. We're going to probably do it like a podcast on that. And, uh, I've got a lot of ideas for bringing in some of my squad brothers as well. Uh, talk a little bit about, you know, where their backgrounds are and what their specialties are and, you know, so we're also, I also want to put out there that I'd love to get, you know, ideas from my audience. You know, what are some of the things that you would like, uh, from the podcast that we can talk about? Um, I know that, uh, uh, a lot of people are looking at it like, oh, we just want to know more about you and what you do and, and all those types of things. But we also want to get it to that next level of bringing in talent and, and from all walks of life. Uh, like I said, suit up is really going to be about all areas, you know, uh, definitely in your fashion. I'm going to get my boy Tim over there suited and booted. <laughs> Oh yeah, that t-shirt, that t-shirt hitter on right now. That's dude. it. That's it. You gotta gotta get me right. That's right, bro. And and we're, we're gonna have a good time. We're gonna have a good time for sure, for sure. Yeah, we definitely want to do some uh, some user submission or not user uh, viewer submissions. So yeah, 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 yeah. We'll set up like a uh, like an email box or, or something, some link that y'all can send your questions into for your, sure. You know, fit checks, yeah. like whatever we want to do, yeah, rate, yeah. rate money. Inspirations, yeah. like, um, you know, fit um, outfit inspirations or ideas or how to put stuff together, um, how to be a model, yep. uh, how to get involved with um, the fashion industry, um, you know, a wide variety of topics. Even even talk a little bit. Uh, I'm excited. I'm probably going to have, uh, before long, I'm having my wife, my wife on the podcast. We're going to talk a little bit about what that's been like through this journey, um, being married to a public figure and all the things that come with that and learning on the fly. Uh, what the best part about it is, and I, I'm excited about this, is that we've been together longer than this career of mine. So we've had plenty of years. You know, It wasn't like we got married after the fact. We've been together 21. So we've been able to grow together and go through ups and downs and learn on the fly and you know, that's another thing. We're going to be of, of inspiration to you and give you some points and, and, and um, experiences that we've gone through of what that like and um, how she feels about it and, and, you know, ups and downs, you know, high highs and low lows. It's, it's all there. You, it's real life. Let's put it to you that way. It's definitely not for everybody. And sometimes you got to adjust on the fly and learn to, you know, deal with the crazy DMs that come in and, you know, all of that. It, it's yep. it's 10 layers deep, really. It's not just uh, showing up and looking good for the camera. There's a lot of things that are involved with it behind the scenes that, uh, that we're excited to be able to share with you in the future. So Yeah, definitely submit your questions. And, I mean, you can leave questions in the comments. You can send in video submissions. Um, by the time this is out, I'll have – it'll be up on the screen. Yeah, you know, where to send those? Yeah, 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 for yeah, sure. Ask the questions, fashion, life in general. Definitely hit that subscribe yeah. button too. That's right, for subscribe sure. To the channel. Yeah, we're gonna have a lot of uh, promos coming up, and and we'll put it out there. Uh, may even get to a place where we have a little merch for you. All kinds of cool things. So it's definitely, you know, it's an exciting time because now we are building the foundation. Um, you know, today I really just wanted to talk a little bit about you know myself and my background. Um, I left some details out because they're going to be in some future podcasts. We'll we'll dig in a little bit deeper, and uh, we're going to be as real and as authentic as possible. What you see is what you get. Uh, we're not putting on airs. You know, I'm just you know grateful to be here, excited to be a part of the podcast. 
um, suit up. Love the name. Man, I tell you what, when we came up with the name, I was like throwing stuff across the room because I was like, that is exactly it. (laughs) It it epitomizes exactly what I wanted to portray. So I'm excited about that too. So for sure, for sure. So one of the questions I get a lot of times um, is, you know, when did you start dressing well or how did you start dressing well? How'd you learn? All those kind of things. Um, and I, this is kind of an interesting story, but I grew up in a household where my mom picked out my clothes for me growing up. <laughs> uh, she always told me, she's like, you are not going to school with like holes in your jeans and looking all sloppy. She called it sloppy. She says, I'm not having you going, going to school sloppy. So she would always, you know, go out and, and buy my clothes and, and dress me a certain way. And, Uh, It instilled in me at a very young age, you know, uh, looking, looking nice or having your clothes fit you properly. Let's put it that way. Um, She's like, yeah, you're not wearing blue jeans and you're not doing all this and you're not looking. Hair's not going to be cut or combed or all that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, I grew up as that being normal. So it was instilled in me at a very young age. And as I got older, I always had a fascination, you know, with the military and uh, so my uh, finishing up through middle school and I approached my parents, I was like, you know, I would love to go to uh, Benedictine and Benedictine is an all boys, you know, military school. And I just had a fascination with the uniform and just thought it was cool. And I was like, I, I think I would really enjoy that. My dad was in the army uh, for a short time, well before my mom and dad were married, but I always knew I uh, saw pictures of him uh, when he was in the military and he went to Virginia Tech and was in the Corps of Cadets. So I saw him in his uniform, you know, pictures that we had. And it just always fascinated me because I liked the, the the crispness of it. It always looked put together well and pressed everything. And so uh, they, they said, yeah. And so I went to Benedictine and I got to don that uniform every day. Uh, the, the military style and everything was always pressed and starch and crisp, shine shoes you know, I just enjoyed, I took great pride, you know, in the way that I looked and dressed and it just carried on. And then through my, you know, professional career, you know, I was in the army, I'm an army veteran. So I served and enjoyed the fact of serving my country, but also enjoyed always looking my best and, and, you know, uh, presenting myself in a professional way. Uh, then after I got out of the military, got into the professional sector and, you know, that you were always dressed nice shirts and ties and, wearing suits. Uh, and and I just enjoyed it. It was, it was part of who I was. And I learned through trial and error of experience of putting a few things together, like how to put this together with this, what does this pattern look with this? And, you know, just trying to experiment. And, uh, the more I started taking note of fashion, you know, obviously I watched a lot of, um, movies and, and learned a lot from Hollywood. Uh, some of the old ones, you know, like the Cary Grants and the Frank Sinatra's and, the the uh, uh, gangster movies. Oh my gosh, I, I love gangster movies. The Godfather and Casino and you know Goodfellas, all of those. And one of the things I always noticed about those movies was how well everybody was dressed, um, suited and booted, right? Oh, yeah. And my, one of my favorite movies is Casino, and and even to this day, I find sometimes that I will find inspiration. From believe it or not, I think De Niro had forty some wardrobe changes, forty some suits within the movie Casino, and I find some of those are even relevant to this day of just the way that they put those together and and the way he looked. And I'm like, man, that cat looks fly as can be, man. I, man, I love that color combination. I love the way that looks. So I, I would use that as inspiration and just kind of pick and choose little things and. Uh, from a wide variety, even like I said, the back in the twenties and the thirties, and even some in the sixties and some in the seventies, um, and that, and I feel like even the seventies style is kind of coming back around again a little bit, uh, and and I loved it. I love all of it. It was a lot of fun to be picking and choosing and try to dress, and and now it's just come to a place where it comes natural. I really don't have to think about it too much. I know you kind of have your vein that you stick and you see things, or you can start put things together when you go shopping and look for. And, you know, one of the things that I tell guys is we all have a tendency to cater towards certain colors or certain patterns. And uh, we'll see something in the store and we're like, you know, I like that, but I'm not sure how to put it together. And so really you have to kind of experiment a little bit and step out of that comfort zone. 
uh, even even I still do. There's within the squad. Oh man, we're always inspiring each other. Where even I've noticed my style has changed a little bit just being with the squad, where uh, they're inspiring. I'm relearning new things and and getting new perspectives on style and pattern and and fits. And it's it's amazing because now I'm like I had my background. Now I'm adding their inspiration background. Now I'm turning it into a whole nother new avenue that I'm getting into. Um, and, and so that's where, you know, even just the regular guy off the street can find not only inspiration from us, but he can start to see what are some of the colors and things that I love and patterns that I love and how can I start incorporating that into my daily outfits and, you know, where am I seeing uh, inspiration from? Am I seeing stuff on social media that I love or if I'm seeing stuff on the movies that I love or the shows that I watch? Because uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of things with guys is we don't have that, that part activated all the time. You know, we're either the type of job that we have or if we're a uniform type job or the type of industry that we're in, it may not cater to that. So we don't really, uh, it's like a, a, an untrained muscle. So we have to go in and we'll, we'll kind of train it a little bit. Let's, let's start to, to get your, those creative juices flowing and, and start to see where, uh, where we're at, where, where can we get to, what are some basic things that we can do, how can we start to, to incorporate new looks and, and patterns and colors and all of that. So it's, it's an organic process, but we have to kind of start somewhere. So all that comes from, for me came from just childhood, from experiences from work that I did from watching the television, watching movies, watching shows, uh, is really where I got a lot of my beginning inspiration and I kind of gave me a base and then I just kind of let it go from there organically based on wherever I was now with the squad and all these types of other things uh, was a, uh, fashion designer for a small, uh, semi-national clothing brand here and went through and designed my own suit line and we sold it for a couple of years. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, learned a little bit more about the designing process, the actual intricate details of, you know, materials and outsourcing and fabrics and all that. So it's really, really interesting to see how all of that comes into play. Um, and there's really no wrong answer. A lot of people are like, well, yeah, but I'm not real sure. But if it's you and you can embrace it and you can uh, make it your own, I love the individuality of it. Uh, you can make it whatever you want it to be. Yeah, I feel like sure. the, the answer is confidence. Yes. Yeah, he can pull off anything. Absolutely. <laughs> One of our brothers, man, I love him to death. He pulls off like the floral paisley suits. Oh, love it. But he embraces it. Yeah. Right? I wouldn't. It's not me, right? I love it, but I wouldn't wear it. Yep. But my boy looks amazing. <laughs> amazing in it. And and that's the thing. It's being confident enough to give it a shot for sure. Yeah. For yeah, sure. absolutely. Yeah, Paisley's tough, man. Mm -hmm. I, I love a good Paisley, though. I, I remember... We, I, me and uh, Zach both went to a small private school here in the county, and we had chapel day. So we always had to wear a tie on chapel day. And I was all into the ties. I yes. had so many ties lined up, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Green paisley one, I'll never forget. You can never have enough of those. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> I, yeah, you could have, like, drawers and drawers just full of, of ties and pocket squares. Right? Yeah. Yeah, infinite possibilities. Infinite possibilities. And there's no, no, no wrong answer on that one. If you see it, you like it, grab it wear it go for it that's what i say that's what's what your say. uh what's your take on like like i feel like everything's kind of slim fit now but you know maybe yeah. 10 plus years ago everything was a little you know back relaxed fit yeah a little more yeah. relaxed fit yeah. what do you think that'll ever come back or it, it is a little bit um i've seen a trend in uh a little bit of off of slim fit uh i like to call it the italian fit okay um you know, a little bit more of a higher crop on the on the uh, pants, like what I'm wearing today, and the no socks thing is kind of really taken off a lot for us. Um, yeah, I think really the relaxed fit can look good if it was the right fit for the person. Um, never been a fan of the baggy stuff. Yeah. Off the rack hitters, <laughs> right, right, yeah. The, the fifty nine dollars that... special at Macy's, <laughs> yeah. Right, right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll always say you could take a, and this might be something we do later on. Is like you take the ninety nine dollars suit, but you mm -hmm. can make it look like a five thousand dollars suit. Oh yeah. Um, it just in the subtle details and knowing how to do it. 
but yeah, I'm not a, I'm not opposed to off the rack either. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of people that, you know, just based on budget or their lifestyle that they have to shop that way, but there's still ways that you can, can shop off the rack and not have to have everything custom, everything, um, that you can really, really make yourself look really sharp, really put oh, yeah. together nicely. And, and, and really you can wear it with confidence. Um, but yeah, I have seen a trend really coming back from relaxed fit into more of the slim fit. Uh, one of the trends that I'm seeing now is, you know, getting more of the flare bottom, you know, pants, okay. uh, not quite the full on bell bottom, but a little bit more of a loose, uh, flare. I personally like the more fitted on the thigh and then from the knee start to give a little bit more, you know, of a flare, uh, higher waisted. Uh, I just think it's it's a great fit. It's very versatile. You can dress it up or dress it down. That's just my personal, you know, opinion and preference. Um, I love the uh, the double breasted. Oh man, you can't go wrong with double breasted. I I'm I'm in that vein right now. Like everything I'm getting, I'm like, is does it come in double breasted? I want it in double breasted. <laughs> um, so yeah, it it really is. I'm not too much on the 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 style kind of coming and going you know the fads uh i like kind of finding that one thing uh that i feel is timeless and it doesn't matter if i wore it 50 years ago or today uh it still looks good now, i know there's going to be some times where if we're in casual clothes and you know you go to buy a pair of jeans that it's cut a certain way a boot cut or slim fit or relaxed fit you know i get it i there's going to be certain times where i'm going to wear you know, certain things like that. But, but the overall I look for is what can I find that's timeless regardless of, you know? Yep. Yeah, for yep. sure. I feel it, man. Let's do uh, let's do something fun. Let's do a lightning round. I'm just going to make this up on the spot. Here we go. I'm going to give you a situation. Tell me what you're wearing. Ooh. Yeah. I like, I like that. that. I right. like that. All right. Let's do a, uh, and and keep try to keep it short, but just get the, get the details. I'll give you the you know? I'll give you the quick the quick like first thing comes to mind. That's right, that's it. All right, summer twelve o'clock noon wedding. I'm going to wear a uh, white linen pants, and I'm going to wear a uh, polo shirt, uh, like a three button, and then maybe a um, kind of a uh, neutral colored uh, blazer. Okay. Respect. I can, I can, I can see that. Let's do a uh, company Christmas party. Company Christmas party. All right, that one I'm going to go out a little bit. I, I might do a uh, velvet dinner jacket. Okay. Um, black shirt, black tie, and uh, probably a either a white pair of pants with black shoes, like black patent leathers. Okay. Or depending on the color of the of the velvet blazer, I probably will do like a complimentary odd color with that. Okay. Yeah, white pants are bold there, but I I, I respect it. Totally. Yeah. yeah that, you gotta stand I, I am I am anti black, no black, more black. white after oh, Labor yeah, Day. Yeah, yeah. I'm like no. people still do that? Is that still a thing? <laughs> Irrelevant. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I've always liked the uh, the black on black black shirt, black tie. It's yes. just ever since I've seen um the hangover bradley cooper's yeah when they were going out gambling right 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 right. it's like yep that, that's it it's a power look absolutely it's a power look yeah. and, and again that's a 25 dollar shirt 30 dollar tie it's all you need you could find a pair of you know white pants from wherever yeah. macy's dillard's whatever and and then now the investment may be in that velvet dinner jacket yeah right? that's gonna cost a little bit a little bit <laughs> yeah and then find you a nice pair of you know uh, black patent leather shoes, which are easy to find. Sure. Uh, and then finding a uh, complementary color for your pocket square, yep. just to add a little bit of color, a little bit of pop of something like that. Man, that combination right there. Whew. Yeah, you'd be turning that, heads. That man. guy right there. That guy right there's got it right yeah. there. Right. <laughs> right. That's it. Something other than the basic navy blue suit or the right. black suit with the with the white shirt and the the you know. Um, boring tie right right yeah you want to stand out you want to stand out a little dressing bit. up you need to yeah to peacock if it's, a little if it's bit. A, yeah. <laughs> i love it yeah <laughs> the peacock in a little bit at the uh at the at the christmas party all right so that's two down what else we got let's do a uh let's do a job interview man job interview at a at a tech startup okay 
double-breasted gray suit. Okay. I would wear a uh, navy blue uh, shirt and then a solid tie, whatever color. Something a little more darker. I wouldn't go like a um, pastel or anything like that, but I would do maybe a, a navy blue tie or I would do uh, a black tie, but with that, that gray suit and a navy blue shirt. Uh, and then maybe some brown loafers. Okay. So you don't feel yeah. like you'd be too dressed up. No, nope. no, not at all. When not the guy that's, you know, 20 years old is interviewing you in a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I always say, uh, you know, um, dress for the part you want to play. Yep. So if you, if you want to be taken seriously, you want to be making a great first impression. Now, granted, I understand in this day and age, not everybody is, the, the, the workforce attire has changed. Yeah, totally different. And I understand different. it. Totally different. It's more like business casual and all that kind of stuff. But for me, you know, I, I'm going to... Going out. I'm going out. I love it. Going out. Love that. Let's do a... Um, let's do a dinner party at your in-law's house that's in like a nice neighborhood. Okay. Not a super fancy one, just a nice one. Yeah, so that one I would probably do um a uh burgundy wine colored uh, suit okay. uh, single button and uh something like the pink shirt that i'm wearing today very similar to actually what i'm wearing yeah that wouldn't probably go double breasted but i would probably go you know just a single unbuttoned casual no tie open collar um burgundy kind of wine colored suit okay yeah here's a curveball nascar race all right, NASCAR. <laughs> you have no media presence here. You're just going as a fan. You're just going as a fan. Right. I would probably do my surfer look. Okay. Because when Talk it's about it, yeah, I I love. So when it's time to go casual, like we go to the beach a lot, and and uh, um, I'm a beach guy. I love spending time vacationing at the water. Oh, yeah. So I would I would do something like a. I'm I'm a big fan of local surf shops. So whenever we go vacationing i want to find not the the major brands yeah i want the local mom and pop surf shops and the clothing that they sell within those surf shops i love that stuff yeah just because it's different it's not something that everybody can get unless they're there yep and it's time to be you know it's comfortable sure uh I will at times, yes, still color coordinate what I'm wearing at the beach. You know what I mean? It's like I do the be, same thing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's going to be a, you know whatever color I have on my t-shirts can either be on the swim trunks or the shorts or whatever, and I'll find a coordinating hat. You know, not to go all out, but I at least want to make it yeah. look. You're going to look good. I'm going to make it look put together. <laughs> yeah. Right. So NASCAR race, yeah, I would do uh, like a surfer surfer shop, a t-shirt, um, one of my snapback. You know, skater style brims. I love that flat snapback okay. skater style brim hat. Yeah. Uh, a pair of Vans. Okay. And, uh, you know, a pair of either jean shorts or uh, uh, khaki shorts. Um, yeah. A little bit closer to the knee. Yeah. Not, I don't want them, you know, all the way down past the knee. Uh, and I don't want the, you know, what do they call them? The hoochie daddy shorts <laughs> where they're kind of mid thigh. <laughs> yeah. We're not going there for NASCAR. But, say, you know, like to the knee. Nice pair of shorts and a t-shirt, hat, a couple of accessories, you know, watch, bracelet, and and my slip-on Vans. That's what I would wear. Fair enough. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, I feel like the short shorts are coming back, man. They are. They are. Yeah. Um, Got to wear them right. Yeah, for sure. Got to wear them right. Like, I feel like all, all those pictures of, like, our dads at the beach in the 50s, you know, like, that style, at least swimsuit is coming back. Yeah, it like is. the shorts are following. And if I could be totally honest, they actually had the bodies to wear them back then. That's true. Yeah. And if you and that's that's one of the things too. That's uh, again, elevate our game individually. If you're going to stink and wear those shorts, please know your body. Know your body. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Got a nice definition of your thighs and nice leg definition. Fine, yep. right? But come on now, <laughs> let's let's look in the mirror before you walk out the door, please. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people just don't have that that thing. I mean, like fashion is art, right? Just yeah. the same way cooking is art. Correct. Right? Video work is art, right? Yeah. And yeah, a lot of people just don't have that that eye. And yeah. It's like, why can't I wear my white socks with my all black shoes? It's like, uh. Well, you can if you, <laughs> you are could. going to be in the senior living home. Right. <laughs> you can wear your white socks and your sandals. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. But 
Yeah. I, I know uh, it's great. you made a great point. You said that a lot of people don't, they don't know it or they don't, they don't have it. Uh, but it is a learned behavior. Sure. Getting back to that, you just got to activate it. We, yeah. we all have it. Like I could have didn't know how to dress until I started to, you know, look into it, research it, think about it, experiment, ask. Yeah. Ask. Um, but you, you, I guess the differentiator there is you always had that thing in you that was like, that looks good and I want to do that. Yeah. There's a lot of people are just like, well, eh, the shoes work. Eh. Right. <laughs> Why am I going to get new ones? They're more of functionality. Exactly. Yep. Very utilitarian. Yep. Wardrobe and all of that. Yeah. And I understand. I, I get that. There's the comfort level utilitarian, but there's, you know, if you're willing and coachable and can make a few adjustments, man. Oh, yeah. It, it, it does change your personal confidence. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. Um, and with that comes a lot of other benefits, yeah. you know, daily relationships, interactions, all of that. And that's not just about wardrobe. That's in all areas of our lives. Yeah, so, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like yeah. The, the charisma, man, that's that's the charisma and confidence. So they can kind of be interchangeable, but the, those two things are just yeah. massive. You can walk into any room and just run Own the show. It. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Own the room in which you walk in. Yeah. That's a, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it is. It is. It's, a, it's it, again, it's learned behavior and you've got to develop it. It's something that, uh, you know, people have confidence. Everybody's got some level of confidence, but some is just a different, yeah. you know. Um, but the more that you feel good about who you are, that again boils down to personal coaching. And, you yeah. know, we all have things that we've gone through and experiences. And, and I totally am very understanding to all of that. But we all can develop our confidence and our wardrobe and our lifestyle and and by doing such makes us feel better about ourselves. And if I feel better about myself, I'm going to perform better in yep. everything that I'm doing. My daily job, my in my relationships, yep. uh, the people that I meet, um, all of that, all of that. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, I feel I, me, me and you have very similar personalities, so I feel like you'll identify with this. But I have this like blind confidence about me. It's like whatever the thing is. Yeah, I can probably do it. Oh, of course, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. Like if if you give me enough time to just look into it for a few minutes like i could i'll figure it out definitely you know, i'm not saying that i can be a brain surgeon but like I guess, <laughs> give, me, give me enough time enough research i could make a cut somewhere they might <laughs> not make it off the table <laughs> yeah. but i can figure but out your boy's gonna try yeah and, i would have given my best <laughs> shot and it's, it's just always worked out and it sounds like kind of through your journey it's been the same thing it's like oh hey your, your voice is pretty crazy you ever tried this you're like nah well let's I'll go try it. <laughs> yeah it, it, that's that's a good point too when I started, um, I, I did not, I wasn't afraid of giving it a shot. Yeah, I think that's be. what it boiled down. And then once you started, you started building whatever the thing was, you started it, it built confidence. Yep. So when the next thing come, it was very much, oh yeah, I'll definitely, yep. you know, oh this, oh yeah, definitely. That's I don't, all it is. Yeah. And, and it become, then it becomes a game. Yeah. Then it's then it becomes fun. Yeah. Then you're like, into? right? What else can I do? I, I want ten things going. I operate for me personally. I operate at a high level. I need ten things going at one time. Me too. Yep. And and if I have two or three things going, I'm like something's wrong. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm failing miserably. What do I need to do? I need to get. I need to create something. And even sometimes it's creating uh, friction just to get things going. Sure, stir the pot. Throw, stir the pot a little bit. Yeah. And then when I'm back up to 10 things going on, I'm like, okay, all right, now I feel like we're, you know, I don't know if that's like attention deficit disorder. <laughs> it's, it's something. But it's something. It's, it I'm too. like, we got to get going, man. <laughs> it's time. Like, I'm a man of action, and oh, yeah. it's time to get going. And when it's, it ain't no time to mess around, you know. Yeah. That's it, man. I mean, I, I'm balancing. You know, I got three kids at home. Yeah. Wife's pregnant. Yeah. Full-time job. The business on the side. and. And I'm still just saying yes to stuff. <laughs> right, 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 right. I just right. love it. Well, and it's it, to me, it's uh, you don't want to look back with regret. You don't look back with missed opportunities. That's right. And that's another thing too. Like I want to tell my audience, like don't be afraid to like to go for it. Yep. It it is. I would rather you go for it, and either and if you failed at it, you learn from an experience, and you can just pick it up and try again at something else. Don't don't say no to a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, Man, if I had said no, I'm not sure, or, or I'm not real, you know. If I had said no to joining the Silver Fox Squad, yeah, imagine that. <laughs> imagine that. If I'd have been like, you know what, I don't feel comfortable, uh, you know, because, you know, I know that 
they come from a certain demographic. How am I going to fit in? Yeah. They're, they're really different than I am. Yep. How is it? How am I going to fit into this? Or, uh, 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 my, my personal business or something else was going on or my family lifestyle or just whatever. If I'd have found excuses to say, I'm just kind of too busy for that right now. I'm not sure what the return's going to be because we're all, you know, they're casting vision where we're, they're growing the brand. It was on, you know, this side of it a little bit. I was like, mm, I'm just not sure, you know, I'm not, yeah. do I, do I trust the process or do I, do I get super conservative and be like, I just, I want to play it. I want to play it safe. Yep. I'd rather play it safe. Uh, man, yeah. the stuff I would have missed out on. Right. Yeah. I mean, just, just the fact that we got on, um, you know, the Steve Harvey yeah. talk show was, you know, phenomenal experience. That guy. So what I will say this, what you see, is who he really is. Oh, 100%. Yeah. He, is, he is the coolest guy. That just guy. comes right through the TV. I mean. Right? And he got all excited when we got on there. He's like, man, this is my kind of thing. He's like, he's, these guys, he, he just became, he had a script, mm. totally went off script. Oh, yeah. It was like, <laughs> you know, they're trying to keep him in direction. He was like, man, I'm hanging with my boys, and That's we're just right. having a good time. <laughs> Talking about, you know, who we are and where we're from and love what we had going on. You know, all those experiences. Boils down, you can all track it back. Like if I had made one decision to maybe not try something and i'm not saying that's the end all be all we've sure. reached the top of the mountain it's a stepping stone along the way but the missed opportunities you know I, and i'm a risk taker it is what it is i have i can build the house one day and i can burn it down the next but i'll build another one right after <laughs> you know build the next one twice as good <laughs> exactly exactly i i'll be totally honest that's that's you know a blessing and a curse uh and i can't wait to talk about that uh, when my wife is here, so she could. Oh yeah, I'm interested you know, to hear. Yeah, she's going. She's going to lay it on. Yeah. She's going to lay it on. <laughs> but but at the same time, you know, by taking those risks and really putting ourselves out there, man, the payoffs. Oh, you yeah. know, I'll, I'll tell. I wouldn't change anything. I I'm glad that we've gone through the high highs and the low lows and had to start all over and everything like that because it, you learn to appreciate things more. Yep. You know, the older you get the more, and the more mature that you are, you, you look back and you're like, man, another great thing is all the experiences, the ups and the downs and the lows, you're able to impart wisdom to others. You're in able to, you know, if they're going through a similar experience, I'm like, you know what, man, I understand. Yep. Been there, done that. You know, this is what I did to get through it. This is what helped me. You know, these are some of the things, the mistakes that I've made that, you know, again, if you're coachable and willing to listen, absolutely. Yep. You know, I'm not trying to dictate anything on you, but if you'll take a little piece of advice or just a little, you know, past experience, it'll help. Uh, help a lot. Oh yeah, help a lot. Collaboration and and yeah, mentorship, all that stuff. Man. Yeah, I mean, everything we're saying is what everybody says, right? Anybody that's successful yeah. says the same thing. Oh, in collaboration. There's a reason that they say that. Hey, don't be yeah. afraid to fail. Right. right. You know, put, put yourself out there. Try yeah. Like there's a reason successful people say that. Take take the risk. <laughs> take the risk. And you can take calculated risk. Of course. Yeah, right. yeah. Be smart about it. Right. Don't give up everything. Don't give up your mortgage payment, you know, to take Please. that risk. <laughs> no, 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 no. But That's people, what some people hear. Some, some people are just like, all right, you know what? Screw it. That's now, right, man. Throwing in all my chips. I quit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> quit my job. Which sometimes oh, is the right move if you have kind of that other side of the coin. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The personality, yeah. the charisma, the yeah. confidence, yeah, 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 and the yeah. skills to do whatever you're trying to do. But and, I'll, and I've willed a lot of things to happen. Oh, yeah. By just sheer grit and determination. Like, I'm not giving up. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it happen. That's right. Um, good or bad. You know, you learn. Yeah. You learn. <laughs> but I, I, I love how you said collaboration. That's another whole nother element. Be willing to collaborate. Yeah. Be willing to set your own ambition aside to develop relationships and to collaborate because you just never know how that's going to come back around or what opportunities come from that collaboration. I mean, years of my beginning this journey was strictly collaboration yep. with no money exchanging hands. And looking back, those are some of one of the most solidified relationships that I have. Oh yeah. And you know, I was now that I'm doing bigger and bigger things, you know, you look back and you remember those people that you got that, that gave you the shot, gave you the shot. They collaborated yep. with you, all those types of things. And that's vitally important. I don't care where you're from, what walk of life you are. 
find a way to, to collaborate, find a way to, you know, find something that you're interested in, whatever it is, doesn't yeah. matter. And if there's someone that's either in that industry or someone that is, you know, well ahead or experienced in it, reach out, see yeah. if there's a way. Offer value. Yeah. That's offer value. If you have time, you can offer that time to help. Yeah. I tell people that all the time, especially within um, the fashion week yeah. uh, aspect. I always say one of my one of my mantras that I'm like refuse to ever give up on and say over and over and over again, if you are there, make the most of the time that you're there. Yep. Don't just come and do it and then change and jet and leave. Yeah. You are losing drastically use every opportunity to develop a relationship shake hands kiss babies do yep. as much as you can and and get to know business cards pass out collaborate set up times and set up appointments do whatever it, whatever it is that's just within that realm but those same principles can be done with with anything oh and yeah i love i love collaborating i love collaborating yeah yeah 100 percent, man i feel like a lot of it is um the, the collaborating the right way too is rooted in like self-awareness to an yes. extent like i you know I, I could walk in the day one that i bought a camera i could walk into a, a studio and be like i'm a camera guy <laughs> i'm a videographer <laughs> i'm ready to go like no you when you're when you're starting at zero like you got to be willing like hey what can i can i sweep the floors here and y'all just like teach me a couple things on like just do the just get in however you can at first yeah. be have that humility to and and you know don't have that pride to where you you can't do that stuff for right. free or right. you know, whatever that looks like so. yeah if it's what you're interested in like the whole even the modeling aspect of it like i showed yep. up to the casting calls as if i was a nobody and filled out the paperwork went through the process yep. listened to what all they told me to do did all the things and you know showed up early stayed later did whatever you know all the things all the things Jeez. and you put in the dues now i'm now i'm running it running yeah, that yeah. part of it right so it's interesting how um <laughs> most of the time so I, one of the things that i have as well is i have a contracting business and within the contracting business a lot of my customers would would uh, kid me and say you know for one you answered the call and two you actually showed up yeah so a lot of them don't. Mm -hmm. So I use that in a way of sometimes if you really will just show up and you're willing, uh, even show up early or just show up and be, you know, uh, uh, coachable or be able yeah. to say, I'll do whatever you're a leg up on uh -oh. so many others, most other people, most other people <laughs> yeah. make yourself known, make yourself yeah. recognizable, you know, let them remember who you are. Um, and it's interesting. Like I meet, Every, every season, just within fashion, I'll use that as an example, I meet hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. Yep. And I don't remember all their names. It's, it's very, very hard to do that. But there's certain ones oh, yeah. that I'll remember. That's right. Or, or they made an impression or there's something about whatever that I'll remember their name. And they they're, you know, see them every year and we'll even get to the point of uh, being able to, you know, text or have little uh, lunches or outings together or, you know, begin to develop the relationship outside of the, yeah. you know, the, just the professional fashion week. Sure. But it's, it's those, what are they doing to set themselves apart? And I appreciate that because I remember, I remember what it was like to have to go through the hustle and the grind like that. Um, that whole, you know, you treat others how you want to be treated. And I, and it goes a long way. And it, it's worked extremely well for me, and and I start to see it. And when I see that same fire desire in others, yeah. I'm like, Ooh. you want to bring them with you? I, I'm like, Ooh, <laughs> I got something for you. Yeah. Like I have a connection, or an introduction, or somebody that I'd like for you to meet, or come do this, yeah. come be here for this. So, yeah, yeah, collaboration, be, being coachable, taking the risks, you know, giving it a shot, and and just rolling with it. And I don't care what it is. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It applies to literally every yeah. vertical. Your hobby. Yeah. Whatever your hobby is. That's it. Yeah. Do, so. do it for the love of the game and the money follows, man. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's how it goes. Well, that, that's been a, uh, shoot, it turned into a little business master class. Of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. Nothing wrong with Again, that's what this podcast is about, yeah. right? We are suited up. Like, that's suit up. It's all, all facets of life, man. For sure. For sure. For sure. All right, guys. So we did it. This is episode one 
Um, again, I thank you so much for being with us today on Suit Up with Stephen Adkins. Be sure to hit the subscribe button for us. Uh, the like and comment. Let us know, you know, what some of the things you'd like to hear more about or see just to give us some ideas. You know, we've got a good arsenal of information we're going to put out there and some great podcasts coming up. But I always like to know what my audience thinks and feels. Um, be sure to follow. You can follow me uh, on my socials. So on my Instagram, uh, it is my last name, Adkins.Steven. But I'll be honest, you can just put in Stephen Atkins in Instagram and I'm going to come up. Uh, TikTok, you can find me at Stephen at Stephen.Atkins. And then also on Facebook, just uh, Stephen G. Atkins the third. That's my full official name there. Federal name. That's right. That's the one that's on my little social security card. Stephen G. Atkins the third, third. right? <laughs> but again, yeah, great, great show today. I really appreciate you joining us. Uh, we're going to have a good time. This is going to be a great podcast. And we'll see you soon. Thank you.